Now there's the finished part that modifies the rack so it can be rotated on the angle it's rotated at and still push the tie rods back and forth. So it's just two car wheel studs and some car wheel nuts are going to hold the tie rods on so these bolts that stick out go through the tie rods, there's one on each side and the two holes go to the two original bolts where the tie rods attached to which is now underneath the rack so that'll be mounted like that and when you steer this will go back and forth and do your steering you have to save the spacers that come with the rack in order to mount that plate properly and this, these long bolts, they go underneath and of course I'm just using these new replacement studs to do the job of what these bolts used to do but they'll be sticking that way. And now we're four hours into the job and I must be slacking because I'm just ready to crack my third beer. Oh well, pretty soon the steering is going to be done being modified and then I've got to oh, I'll probably do the struts after the whole thing's done. Now I've got the shifter cable uninstalled, the throttle cable uninstalled, and they have to run up here and I've got to make a mounting bracket for them for the linkages that go to the poles that rise out. And I had our helper buddy, James. James, the 5.6. We already have 5.5. Yeah. Yeah. 0.5. No, that's the cat. <laughs> Anyways, he helped change the problem the car had. Luckily, I saved the hoses and radiator from the old car, but we had a blown rad hose. And she needs a bit topping up. She's burped a little. So add some more antifreeze. So there's not much in the car anymore. But because there's a radio already mounted in the other contraption, my passengers before complained that you should have left the radio in the car. So I did leave it in this time, and we will have a working radio in the car, although the shifter is going to be a dummy. So steering is all modified except for the big chair attachment. There's my angle plate. Everything's bolted on. Ready to slide the tube in from that thing got the brake lines cut off for the front brakes so I can weld them together to the other brake lines. Of course can't put the front end back on until all the welding's done. And we're ready to rock. Lots more passenger space too, this time with a radio inside that still works. The time has come to put the two parts together, the chair attachment onto the car. It's hanging from the hoist now. Got the slot cut in the hood for the steering shaft got the bumper all grounded and prepared to weld that piece on, strengthen the supports and just ready to lower her down now. I'll have to get Rick to get some help to guide this on. So this is day two of the build and we're into it about an hour and a half. Alrighty now she's unhung from the chain hoist. I got the back supported with some ropes to set the angle the front bars tilt at yet they're set pretty straight. Got the points on the roof ground to where the rebar that supports the floor attaches. Got a little cut hole in my front of my roof edge to have the center support and that stops the whole thing from bending back and forth every time you stop and slam down. And got the posts welded to the bumper got the steering shaft all hooked back on. Now I just got to do wires and plumbing. Not much, that's the vacuum hose for the power brakes and a couple cables, gear shifter and throttle. Got a slot cut in the hood so when you close the hood the shaft can come through. So I'm ready to weld. Ready to be <laughs>
okay. So now it's day three and we've got 13 hours into the rebuild of the Redneck Roller Coaster. The whole contraption is securely welded on. I just got done doing the wiring under the dash and now I'm working on remounting the pretty parts on the front. And of course the first issue I knew I'd run into is the headlight and signal light are integral as one. So I had to take my cutting wheel grinder and cut a piece out to clear the pole to do the same thing to the next one. Got the same old ladder welded back on so now that door is not operational anymore. But it's quite sturdy. Wiring all tucked out of the way. Wiring's pretty simple on a GM. Yellow cranks it. Pink fires up the electronics for the ignition and all that stuff. There's two red wires. One red wire sends power to all the accessories and the other red wire sends power to all the electronics and stuff under the hood. I actually left the brake and gas pedal in this one but they're not hooked up. All that's welded down. Hood holes cut. Now I just gotta do my monster job of welding brake lines together which nobody normally does except refrigeration technicians like me. Let's see if she starts. This will be the first start. Sweet. Cool. Definitely runs like it only has 110,000 kilometers like it says on the dash. Even got my original license plate back on. Oh yeah. Can't forget that option. Beer holders.